the support is just so immense in this group and and um and it's just healing and and taking the course was healing in and of itself and and it was beautiful to 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 feel myself grow stronger and become aligned to my truth and and my intuition opening and me believing my intuition Hey everybody, how are you doing? It's Crystal Ann Compton, and I'm hoping you're having a beautiful day. Wherever you are on the planet today, I'm in Teja, Texas, North Texas to be specific, and we are almost at Christmas. Christmas is the day after tomorrow, 2020, and I just want to tell you that I'm wishing you the happiest holiday if you celebrate, whether you celebrate Christmas or Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or the solstice or the upcoming upcoming epiphany, whatever you celebrate, I'm just hoping you love it, have a good time. But most of all, I just want to wish upon you and send your way many, many blessings, blessings of peace and prosperity and joy. And if you want that, say, I want it. Yes, yes, yes. That's for me. And so it is. I also have a gift for you. That's right. A little gift for you. It's a song. Do you want to hear it? Here it goes. Merry Christmas, darling. Now we're apart, that's true. But I can dream, and in my dream, I'm Christmasing with you. Holidays are joyful. There's always something new, but every day's a holiday when I am near to you. And I feel near to you here on video. The camera's all we got, especially in 2020. We are distant, but we are connected by our hearts and every day is a holiday when I am near to you. Merry Christmas, darling, wherever you are. Can you dig it? All right. And amen. Okay. Now I did come here for a purpose. I had something to say to you. We have a question today that we want to talk about a really important one, actually, that I can relate to. And I think many of you can relate to as well. Before I do, I just want to point out, we've got this little banner down here. Got to get my hand right. Oh, Lord. Okay. Textcac.com. If you go to textcac.com, you're going to see a phone number. Okay. You're going to see a phone number, and I want to encourage you to text that phone number because if you do, you will connect to me, and I'll be able to speak to you directly to let you know what's going on with me. If I'm doing a live stream, if I've got an event, if something's coming up, or if I just have a thought about a thing, I can send a text and you will receive it and you can write me back. And although the community is growing and I can't always respond, I do respond often because I just want to, I want to stay in communicato. So text CAC.com, check it out and come hang out with me in that community. Now on to today's question. This one comes in from, and I have to bring it up here because you know, a sister can't see. This is from my Sam cat. Okay. My Sam cat. And if you can't see, um, there's a, cat. There's a cat in your avatar. a cat. Oh my God, Sam. Is that Sam? Sam is adorable. The way he's looking into the camera, I just, I can't. This, that look. Oh my God. Hi, Sam. <laughs> okay, moving on. Before I spend 10 minutes talking about your cat. My Sam cat says, hi, Crystal. Hello. And tell Sam I said hello. I know that I have some kind of psychic abilities and I really want to be able to use them. I also have PTSD in that in any way, is that in any way hindering my psychic abilities? I have a lot of problems with anxiety and depression. Thanks. Now, when I choose a question to bring to a video, it is because I'd like to speak directly to the person, in this case, my Sam cat and your cat. But I also want to speak to everybody else who probably has the same issue. And I just want to acknowledge that there are many of us out there who suffer with and struggle with depression and anxiety. And I have had bouts of this throughout my life. And anxiety is something that I presently deal with quite a bit. And also you mentioned PTSD. And while I personally have never been diagnosed with this, because I never, I never really sought out clinicians who might be able to do that, 
I would not be a bit surprised, let's say, if I had at some point in my life something like PTSD or CPSD just because of the acute nature of the abuse in my childhood. It was it was terrible and it was for a long period of time. And so I definitely think that I have some I've I've had something like that, which is all to say, not making this about me at all, my Samcat. I, this is all to say that even though I've had depression, I presently struggle a little bit with anxiety. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if I had something like CPSD. I consider myself to be highly psychic, definitely attuned, and somewhat effortlessly navigating in the world of spirit. Like I live a very tuned in and dynamic spiritual life with evidences, evidences of spirit, meaning synchronicities and patterns and things like visitations and visions and premonitions and all the things like I have access to all the things, even though I have my own experience with these types of conditions. So that's the good news. Even if you're depressed, even if you have anxiety, and even if you struggle with something like PTSD or other types of disorders, it doesn't mean you you can't be connected to spirit, and it doesn't mean you can't navigate in the world of spirit. In fact, some people with these issues and other issues as well have more experiences in the world of spirit. Now, the quality of those experiences is something we can talk about because, for example, if we are someone who is deeply depressed and someone who's been in that depressed state for quite some time, that is an energy and a frequency. And of course, we are always creating. We're always creating based on our home signal, period, period. And so if we're spending a long time in a deep and dark place, we're also kind of creating in that space, but we could also at the same time be spiritually connected and very psychic. But that which we are creating might be a little bit more low vibration in terms of evidences. This is just the fact of the matter. Whereas someone who is high vibration, high frequency, maybe practices, uh, vibration modification is tuned into or keyed into consciousness expansion and is working with that all the time, that person is creating from a different space and those evidences will be more high vibe. There's no judgment here. Guess what? We came here to be human. We came here to have experiences. And those of us who are experiencing something like depression, PTSD, or the issues that might have triggered and caused these... We came here, many of us, to understand that on a soul level. That's not a blame thing. I'm not saying, well, you created it and this is your blueprint and therefore you're at fault. I'm not saying that. On a soul level, though, we came here to have many various experiences. And so there's no judgment and there's no blame. So the answer is you can have these and still be psychic. You can have these and still create from the signal of the disorder, but that which you create may be lower in vibration. But having said that, in addition, you can have these disorders and absolutely have them act as an obstruction or an obstacle to your psychic connection. Yes, depression can be an obstacle to your spiritual attunement. Depression, especially the deepest kinds of depression, put us in a low vibrational state. And that acts as a kind of blanket or a shroud over our whole essence, really our whole being. It numbs us, it cloaks us, and it does to some degree, vibrationally speaking, cause us to feel disconnected from spirit. Now, of course, spirit is always present. Spirit is always connecting and connected. It is the depression that causes us to feel as if we are disconnected and also unmotivated to pursue any kind of connection. Yes, depression can act as an obstacle. Anxiety as well can act as an obstacle to spiritual connection. Now, whereas depression is a cloak or a blanket, I feel anxiety more as a chaotic misfiring of energy, a collection of energy in different areas of the body. And with me, my anxiety moves around. I primarily experience my anxiety in the chest and throat area, but sometimes I'm feeling it in my belly. Sometimes it's up in my head. It moves around. And anxiety is the misfiring of the energetic system. And when we're misfiring 
and we have this kind of chaotic pattern of energy, then we don't necessarily have a full a full obstacle, but we have a somewhat unsustainable spiritual connection. There are spaces and places that support connection with spirit, these free spaces that are not encumbered by the anxiety. But, you know, if the anxiety is moving like mine does, then it can move into that area of connection, cut us off periodically until it moves again. And so with anxiety, it can cause us to feel cut off as well, but it's more like a sporadic, it can be a sporadic connection. And then with something like PTSD, this is a, uh, I, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a counselor, I'm talking from a spiritual perspective. This is a modification to the composition of the essential frequency. What do I mean? I mean, we came into this world in a pattern of energy. And I like to liken that to sacred geometry. When Crystal Ann Compton came into the world as a little baby, she was like a flower of life, just perfect. All the lines, all the turns, the pattern was exactly was it what it was supposed to be. But then life began to happen to Crystal Ann Compton and her father was abusive and her mother was an addict and she lived in abject poverty and it was incredibly dysfunctional and the abuse was acute. And so the little lines in that flower of life, the curvatures, the perfect patterns began to be out of alignment. And by the time I was 20, my flower of life was a Brillo pad, y'all. It was a Brillo pad. And the thing about the essential signature of a person is that it's active. It's signaling. It's creating. It's, it's how we create. It's our energy. And so if our energy is all funky and Brillo patty, we are creating based on that wonky energy. And with PTSD, we're kind of looking at, an, at, at somewhat an aspect of this where the energetic composition of the person has uh, become misaligned. And they're now signaling from that misaligned space, creating experiences that relate to that misalignment and kind of keeping them in the loop of that. Again, not a doctor, not a clinician, not a therapist. I'm speaking from a spiritual vantage point. Now, does that mean I stayed a Brillo pad? No. Have I returned to the flower of life? Maybe 20 more pounds? No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I, I haven't. I'm I'm a new pattern, but I do resemble that which I came in to be as a human because I've returned intentionally, you see, consciously to that presence of my I am. And that presence is light. Listen. That presence is resonance. That presence moves things. And the more I am in alignment, vibrationally speaking, with the I am, with source energy, with real love, all of those wacky Brillo pad lines start to create a new divine shape that is me. So... I would assume, since you're a spiritual per person and a spiritual seeker, that you've done work around the things that affect you. You have a diagnosis, and therefore you've gone to see somebody to get that diagnosis, and you understand kind of what your energetic situation is. And these may act as uh, things that make it a little bit more challenging for you to have a sustained connection that you feel and perceive on your end. Again, Spirit's always connected to you. Spirit's always talking to you. It's about whether you can perceive that, right? And whether you can hear that. And so you have some things in place that might make that harder. But guess what? So did a lot of people in history. Look at St. Paul. He spoke about that thorn in his side, a lifelong condition that he struggled with that made it hard for him. <laughs> Look at people who struggle with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and think people who have chronic illnesses. Look at somebody like Padre Pio. He had the stigmata. Look at, like, there's so many different spiritual avatars who also had human conditions that they had to contend with, but it lent to the process of it. And at some point, I do believe there is an opening that takes place as a result of that which you overcome in the energetics. 
there's an opening that happens that makes you more likely to be even more dynamically connected and evidentially because of who it is that you are, because of the new pattern that you are emerging into. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Because of the things that you contend with and are mindful of and the lessons that you are learning through your human condition, you become more of a light in the world, more of a way shower. There's a reason they say pain is the greatest teacher because truly it teaches us so much about this life. And most, if not all, of the greatest teachers had some kind of pain. And so, so do you. But this doesn't have to cut you off from anything else. And to return to your question, and I know I kind of went on and on about it, but I think we need to talk about this. Let's deal with it plainly. To go on with your question, um, you said that you have some psychic abilities and you really want to be able to use them. Well, you can. You can. What I would ask you to do is focus on your vibration. Focus on your vibration and in the ways that you can find things that give you joy, in the ways that you can find things that fill you up with a sense of love or a sense of peace, do those things more. This is so important. It's hard to do this from a depressed place, isn't it? When you're depressed, do you really want to go out and dance in nature? No. Do you want to do anything? No. But the more you can intentionally put yourself into vibrational experiences that will modify your frequency, the better you will be and the more you will connect to spirit. You are already psychic. You are already psychic. You have all the gifts. It's just a matter of keeping the lights on in the house, as we talked about in a previous video. Take heart. There are many of us, me included, that have been through a lot of trauma and a lot of life experience, and it has banged us around, but it has not kept us from optimizing our energy. It has not kept us from getting to know who God really is and who we are as divine beings. And I speak that onto you as well, directly, my Sam Cat, and also anybody else who wants to overcome the physical and mental limitations having, having been dealt to them. Do you want to overcome this? This is possible for you. Spirit has a plan of recuperation and resolution for you. And if you want this and access to this and an active, you want an activation in this, say yes. And so it is given unto you. And so it is given unto you. It is given unto you. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Yes, this human experience is wild, but it's also fun. It's teaching us so much, and we're in this together, my Sam Cat, Mr. Sam, wherever you are, and everybody else. We're in this together. And on that note, again, I just want to wish you a happy holiday from my home to yours. And until next time, please know that I have got nothing but love for you. <laughs>